Hey folks, CJ Booker here, certified hypnotherapist and uh, creator of Subliminal Transformation. Um, gonna do something a little different today. A lot of the questions I get have a lot to do with uh, people wanting to be certain about certain things. Certain about certain things. So you, you can tell I, I don't write scripts for these things, but the thing is people really want to get this stuff nailed down and they want to get a clearer understanding of what's happening. So I, I mean, of course, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. That's what I'm here for. And that's why I made the, uh, the sub facts series of which this isn't really a part, but there is something really important <laughs> from a philosophical perspective that I, I really do need to get across. And it's the nature of humility. So let's talk about humility and what it really is. So for, uh, humility is not beating yourself up. Uh, in fact, it's entirely appropriate to value yourself and, and think of yourself as a precious thing. But humility is also an acknowledgement that you are a, a person, a, a human, and no more or less. So let's talk a bit about what that means and why, and what that has to do with certainty. So you've all done basic math and you, you see charts, right? You know, a bar chart. So you've got like you know, a bar that says like 20 and then another one that says 10. And so, you know, the, the 21 is twice as high as the 10. But then if you put like 100, so that the 100 here, and then these, these the, the 20 and the 10 are now like really small. Okay, you, you kind of have that in your head. Imagine your goodness, the goodness, a uh, measure of you. And give it a number and put it on a chart. And, and assume a range. For humanity say that humanity has a goodness between here and here now imagine perfection perfection is an infinite line that goes up forever which means that everyone's goodness yours included every single human being's goodness shrinks on that graph in the wake of perfection it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until nothing. When I say goodness, I mean anything. I mean knowledge. I mean virtue. I mean wisdom and depth. Everything about a human is by definition limited. And in the face of the universe and in the face of its essentially infinite complexity, we're infinitely dumb. We're infinitely meaningless. But that's actually good news. It's really not too bad. Because ultimately that means that you are every bit as good as the best person who's ever existed. And also that you are too small and feeble and silly and, and, and dumb as a human, because we all are, to ever do anything significantly bad in the face of the universe. We are all, mathematically speaking, infinitely identical in our goodness. You cannot be significantly bad or good. If you ever get any ideas in your head about how much better you are than anybody else, this is a good way to correct it. But likewise, if you ever get any ideas in your head about how much worse you are than anybody else, this is equally valid. It's mathematically impossible to be worse than anyone else, or better. So what does that have to do with certainty? Well, essentially, we are infinitely stupid. The universe is so much more complicated than people are willing to acknowledge. I think humans have a, a sense of it, a, a bit of a, a taste of it. They figure we're going to figure it out. But I mean... We're still cavemen in medicine. We don't even understand how the nervous system works completely. I mean, we've got so far to go. And even if we ever get to the point where we completely understand the body, no one human will ever have that knowledge. That's how small we are, and we always will be. So to ever presume that your model of what thought is, is correct, is a little silly. There's no real way that a human's ever going to get that right. 
Um, the best we could hope for is to create models that when you do something through that model, you get a result that you're looking for. But that's models. That's not reality. Um, another good example, the Niels Bohr model of the atom has like electrons in shells are you know going from one level to the next as they go around the nucleus uh, and we created all kinds of great stuff using that model and in decades that passed after that we found that that model was pretty inaccurate but we kept using it because it works even though it's wrong so point being we just go with what works. We don't worry too much about being right. And that's where certainty comes in. You'll find that people who get things done focus entirely on what gets things done and get rid of the notion of being right or wrong. This way they can accept two things that are mutually exclusive it's either this or this, and, and the, the person who understands that certainty is silliness will just say, well, it's this when I want this result, and it's this when I want that result. And then they move on, and they get things done, and they move in a direction that makes them happier and healthier. Um, but there are people who have firm religious beliefs, and I'm going to go ahead and stick with that word religious. Anytime anyone is absolutely certain of anything they are less correct than those who embrace ambiguity certainty is the decision to pick something as the absolute truth and ignore everything else well no one truth as comprehended by a human being is ever the accurate model for the universe. So to pick any one model and to say, this is the one, is to immediately make yourself dumb. <laughs> or, or to put it another way, to make yourself less healthy, less productive, less capable of discovering new things. Suspect certainty. The people in my life who I've met who are the kindest, the, the most compassionate and caring, have always invariably had a very loose grasp on what they've decided is morally correct. The people who I've found are, are the cruelest, the most ignorant towards others, and, and just generally all around unpleasant, have always been those who are absolutely positive that they've got morality nailed down. And that's just morality. That's just one aspect of human experience. But this applies to everything in your life. Now, I understand why people will resist this. Humans genetically um, are, are, are programmed to fear ambiguity, to, to fear the unknown. That's what's kept our species alive. I mean, to, to fear the unknown means to choose not to go into the dark place where you, you can't see if there's a hole there so you won't break your leg. So, you know, genetically, intuitively, the, the idea of being uncertain is scary, which is why the horror movie industry exists. The movies that really scare us are the ones where you can't quite see or understand the monster. The difference, really, between a monster and an animal is how much light you have shined on it. But, if you want to advance, whatever that means, if you want to be happier, if you want to be healthier, and find yourself finding it easier to be kind to others, Accept your inability to comprehend anything and that that puts you on an even playing field with every other human on the planet who's ever existed and likely ever will. And if you can accept that, life becomes very, very easy. 
it's hard to get mad at people when they misstep, because what else were they supposed to do? They're human. It, it gets hard to get mad at yourself when you misstep, because what else are you supposed to do? You're a human. And it becomes easier to appreciate people for wh wherever they are and whatever they're doing. And then when faced with something like, hey, does this subliminal work, or can subliminals do this? The answer stops becoming yes or no, and becomes, oh, I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. I can't believe how resistant people tend to be to this idea of just try it and see what happens. Everybody wants to know the answer before they make the leap. It's no way to live. I'm, I'm a little older, as, as many of you know, I'm 46. And I look back on my life and the times where I was most miserable were the times where I played it safe, where I had a an idea of, of what would work and then I, I, I locked myself onto that and, and didn't let go. I hung on with both hands. But uh, grace came into my life, kindness and, and peace. When I accepted that the answer was unknowable, suddenly I found myself pursuing things that I found interesting, and life got better. So purge your belief system, purge what you think you know, and as you discover new things, don't consider it new knowledge, just consider it new scenery. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope this helps so many of you who, who feel uh, trapped. And I hope you forgive the sound of my furnace coming on. I mean, Jesus, spring is lasting forever around here. Come on, summer. <clears throat> but uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll call it quits there. Um, any other questions and concerns, leave a comment. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.